Well, Casey here with CL Creative, where we're teaching you web design and Webflow one video at a time. And today we're going to talk about how you can capture uh, form submissions in Airtable. So form submissions from your Webflow site to Airtable without using Zapier, without using Make. We're going to do this directly in Airtable using some webhooks as well as some automations to be able to check and make sure you know the form that we are actually going to be submitting is the correct form and it's going to go to the right table inside of your Airtable. Let's jump into the computer, check things out. Here we are in the computer and we're on the contact us page. This is one of my client sites, uh, Pop Candy. If you need some coaching for your job search or you are needing to hire someone, they are an excellent agency to contact and work with for that career support and talent services. All right. So here we are. The client comes to their you know, uh, contact us page and they submit some information. That information can go inside of Webflow, but one of the advantages to have an air table is that you can create and keep everything in one table in one place. And so here is just one of, you know, a, a table that I have set up right here for the contacts. There's nothing in here at the moment because I just set this up. And before we start getting a bunch of submissions in here, I thought that I would show you how to do this without Zapier and without Make. And so one of the things that you need to do is you need to go in and create an automation. And so let me just create an automation for us. So we're going to create an automation. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your trigger is a webhook. So when this webhook is received, this information is going to be passed over. And what is going to take place is over here on the right side, you're going to get this uh, webhook address, if if you will. And you're just going to copy this address here. And where you're going to place this is inside of your Webflow project. Now, I'm going to show you this on my Webflow project. Um, it's a little bit different from theirs because I'm not going to you know, put in any sort of uh, information in their project that you might be able to utilize. Now, keep in mind, you know, I'm going to delete this webhook as soon as this video is over, so it will not be it will not be active and working, but you go to the settings and then you go to apps and integrations, go to add webhook. And at this point, you're going to select your trigger type. And what I want to select is a form submission. So I'm going to click form submission and then you need to select your version of the API actually end up having this base set up on a version one, but you can select version two based on whichever you know, one that you want. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take that webhook and you are going to paste it right in here and you're going to click add webhook. And then once you do that, this webhook is going to be down here. All right. That webhook is going to be active. I'm going to go ahead and delete this webhook just so you know that this webhook is actually not active, but you would have to publish your website. And then whenever the form is submitted, that form is going to trigger that webhook and that is going to tell Airtable where that should go. So we've taken this, we've put this inside of our Webflow project, we published our Webflow project. Now we need to move to the next step. And the next step is to add some advanced logic. Now, if you only have one form that you are submitting, you don't necessarily need to do this step, but I think that it is, it is helpful. So you do some conditional logic here and you're going to say run this run action in this group if something is true. And what we're going to do is we're going to say that the actual, whoops, that the actual, here is an example of this here. Uh, we are going to run this. Let me edit this condition, open this up. If the body name is a contact form. And so what you would, what you would ideally want to do is you want to trigger this webhook prior to this step so that you do get that that body name. Um, and so in order to trigger that webhook, you're going to go back over here to you know your project, and then you're simply just going to submit your contact form. Once you have submitted that contact form, it's going to trigger the webhook, and it's going to trigger it right here, which is actually going to give you access 
to um, the different properties. And so if you open this up and then you click on this, you click on edit token, you're going to see, you know, the different properties right here that you have access to. And one of the things that we want is we want to say name, and then we want to name it the name inside of our Webflow project that we have given to that form. And so the, the name of this form happens just to be contact form. You can name it anything that you want. It doesn't really matter, but the name of this one just as simply is contact form. Now you notice that this method is a get method and you may think that, oh, I need to put the action right here, but this is where the webhook comes in. This, you're not going to put the webhook here. If you do that, then whenever it submits, it's going to uh, redirect to a status code and you don't want your client seeing that you want them to see the actual contact form submitting and so that's why it's important that we are putting our webhook inside of the settings portion of our project right down here like I did just a few minutes ago once we have that set up we're gonna do their conditional logic and again the conditional logic is if the body name is contact form and then we're going to say we want to create a record. And this is where we are going to be able to, to tell um, Airtable where to put this record. And so you're going to say action type, create record. Here it is, action will run if body name is contact form. And we're going to tell it which table to put it in. In this case, we're going to put it in this contact table. And then you can set a number of different properties. You can assign it to someone. You can set a status or whatnot. But what we actually want to do is make sure that the different fields inside of our contact form are filled out. So I have a name, I have a last name, an email, phone number, message, and then these are just the two assignees. These are not dynamic data, but these other elements are dynamic data. And so once you have submitted that form, you've set up the webhook and you've you've saved your project now you've submitted the form that's when you're going to get access to this dynamic data and if you see that when webhook is received now for the name field i actually want to just put in the contacts first name um, for the last name field you know i want to put in the contacts last name and then you just walk down the list for the email field i want to put in the contacts email for the phone number email uh, for the phone um, and then you want to put in the actual message at the point you can generate a preview and then after that you're pretty much you're pretty much set up you know you would just save the changes you would test the automation and whenever someone then goes to you know your actual website and they submit the form then that information is going to run through the webhook it's going to run through here and then it's going to spit that name out in this table right here. You can do all of that without using Make, without using Zapier. You can use the automations that comes that come with your Airtable. Now, in order to use the the automations, you do have to uh, upgrade to a different plan. But if you're really going to be using Airtable, you need the upgraded plan anyways, um, in order to really get the most use out of it. And so this way, if you're just simply wanting to pull in some of that information from some of these forms that are submitted on your website, you don't need to go and pay for you know another service. You can just utilize the ones that are here inside of Airtable. Well, hopefully that was helpful for you. Hopefully now you see um, how easy it is to set this up and to be able to manage your form submissions inside of your Airtable base. If you found some value out of this video, would you like it? And if you want more content like this, subscribe. I'm putting out content like this on a weekly basis. Hope to see you in the next video.